Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with Kevin from Yankee Hill Machine or YHM. Kevin, how you doing, man? Good, how you doing, Tim? Not too bad. It's a beautiful day. It's not raining. Exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> We've been fighting rain, guys, for the last week straight. So we uh, were finally able to get out to the range and do some shooting with a new product, which is called the Turbo. And it's a 556 can offered by Yankee Hill. And Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about this can and what's uh, what's new about it? Sure. And so this is our new Turbo. It was debuted at SHOT Show 2017. It's a 17.4 stainless steel 556 suppressor. Uh, features an Inconel blast baffle. Uh, weight on it um, comes in right at uh, 13 and a half ounces. The one that Tim measured was actually this one. It measured like 12.8 ounces. Um, sound reduction on it is right around 134 decibels at the muzzle on a 14 and a half inch barrel. Um, one of the biggest features about this product is the retail price on it, including the mount, comes in at $489 to the consumer. So that includes this mount? That is correct. Okay. Tell us something about how this mount works. So guys, if you're used to some of the other ratcheting type mounts out there, this one's a little bit different. On the end, we have a set of teeth on the back side of the can, and it's a coarse thread, so it's just a couple of turns. Yep. But now you're going to hear it start to ratchet or click. Correct. And what we did on ours is the ratcheting interface is actually built into the mount itself. There's no moving parts or mechanisms in the suppressor. So if anything were to wear out, it's on a cheap replaceable $80 part compared to an NFA controlled item. Um, so it's much easier to service and repair on the consumer side of things as well. It's really neat. So you don't have to overly tighten it. It just Once you get that last click, just stop. And based upon the design, I'm going to say that, that carbon seizing really isn't an issue. Have you ever had a problem with it? No, we've been using this design since 05, and for the most part, it's really never been an issue for any consumers. So the reason I bring that up, guys, is some products I've used in the past, like Silencer Co's ratcheting system, I've seen it both pop off the end of the gun, I've also seen it seize, where we try to put a strap wrench on the can, and we wind up breaking loose the mount itself. Mm -hmm. And now we have the mount stuck inside of the can. Uh, and you know, sometimes you just have to send it back to Silencer Co to get it fixed. So right. this ratcheting system is really interesting. So it seems so incredibly simple and it seems to lock up nice and tight. There's no wobble, there's no play. It's almost like you're drawing it up against a taper mount. That is, that is the case. There's actually a small taper mount that's in front of the coarse thread on the outside of the uh, suppressor mount. And it looks like you've done some texturing here so you can actually get a hold of it. Yep, it gives you something to bite onto, especially if you're using like a, a, a mitt or a suppressor wrap to take the suppressor on and off so you don't uh, burn your hand. It gives you some, some friction on it. And just a couple quick turns and it comes off. So this is, you know what, I'm, I'm old fart, right guys? I'm 48 years old and, and if, if you're into cars, you'll know what a unibody is. Uh, this is kind of like the unibody of the suppressor, right? So you've Correct. welded the baffles together. There's no outer sleeve, and that's what's helping you to keep the weight down but increase the volume of the exactly. can. Exactly, yep. yep. And one of the features on this, too, is in our design, this back half is the serialized part. So if you were to ever have a baffle strike or anything where the bullet exited the tube, 99% of the time it's going to happen beyond the first baffle. So all we have to do is you send the suppressor back to us. We remove the baffles. You can weld on a new set to your existing serialized part. So turnaround time for repairs is going to be much quicker than a lot of uh, older cases. And that's really important, especially if you're using a direct thread can. You know, if, you're, if your threads are concentric to bore, not all rifles are made the same, but if you're using the YHM mount with the suppressor, the chances or the likelihood of a, a baffle strike is going to be fairly low. Uh, but if you have a rifle that does not have threads that are concentric to bore, you may actually get one of the, at least typically it happens to that end baffle, you're going to get a bullet to hit that baffle and you'll see some cans out there that are nicked. Uh, does that really affect the performance of the can once that happens? For the most part, sound-wise it's not really going to affect it, but you could have some accuracy issues because it's going to yep. change how the gases are exiting the end of the, the, end of the muzzle and yep. it's going to kind of influence the bullet flight. So if you do actually get a baffle strike, it's a good thing to have it repaired? It's a good idea. How long have you guys been in business? That's the other thing I found interesting. Uh, YHMs, we've been around since 1951. Um, we started off as just a regular machine shop um, making, you know, actually screws. And then in the mid-60s, we got a contract for doing the M16 cleaning rods, which we still make today. And, um, you know, that's kind of how we got our foot in the door with firearms-related products. And then we did a bunch of OEM stuff for other manufacturers, and our own product line just kind of grew. So this is really, uh, this turbo is really kind of a new venture for you guys because this thing is, you know, competitive in the weight department. It is. It's, yep. it's not heavy. A lot of folks will say, oh, I remember, you know, YHM cans are kind of heavy. That's not the case with this one. No, not by any means. This this new model's uh, five ounces lighter than our current Phantom 556 suppressor. Now, is this full auto rated? It is. It's a full auto rated suppressor. Okay. So, 
for those of you that play in that world, it's getting like, it's fewer and fewer people can afford to play in that realm, but right. I always have to ask. I mean, it's basically a rich man's sport or a manufacturer's sport these days playing with machine guns since 1986, but uh, people always want to know. So what kind of a finish do you apply to the, the can? On our, can you on talk about it? All of our rifle caliber suppressors are going to leave the factory with a Cerakote. Okay. Um, C-series coating on it. And that's the high temp Cerakote? Correct. Yep. So the air dry high temp Cerakote, Cerakote says it's good to about 1800 degrees. If you get your can to 1800 degrees, you're getting close to blowing the can off the end of the gun. Yep. Welds start to weaken and things like that. So you're really running the can hard. So um, that's pretty impressive that it, it can handle that. We're not going to run the can that hard this afternoon, but we will do several mag dumps. And we're also going to put this can on the meter and we're going to meter it both at the industry standard, which is 1.6 meters off the ground and one meter left. And then we will also meter this 15 centimeters or about 5.9 inches, six inches off my right ear and give you guys those readings. So we're going to have the industry standard and what I'm calling the C uh, CSAS spec, which is this reading on the right ear. So let's get to doing some testing, see how this thing performs. Sure. And I'm just wanting to shoot this thing and have some fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I want to do mag dumps. I love pulling <laughs> the trigger. All right, let's get going, guys. We're going to get a baseline without the suppressor attached. We do have a YHM triple chamber muzzle brake on it. This is the mounting device for the suppressor for the turbo. We're going to get a baseline with no can attached, and we're using prime 55 grain ammunition. First shot, 168.5, and me yelling made it go up one. Second round, 168.9. One sixty eight point four. One sixty eight point four again. And our fifth round is one sixty eight point four. Okay. So now we have our baseline established. We're going to go ahead and take readings with the turbo attached, and then we're going to do it, which we have the setup right now, set up with 1.6 meters off the ground, and with the pressure sensor, one meter left of the muzzle. We're going to do our test with the suppressor in this configuration. Then we're going to move the, the um, pressure sensor six inches off the shooter's right ear, per the new CSAS specs. I've now attached the turbo suppressor to the YHM muzzle device. We have it set up just like Silencer Shop does their testing. So we have the pickup one meter left of the actual muzzle of the weapon. All right, we're gonna fire five rounds of the prime ammunition and see what we get. We're about 690 feet above sea level. I don't know what the humidity or barometric pressure is right now, but I can give you the, the sea level height. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the meter. Reset it again, because just a bolt closing guys, 112 decibels. All right, here we go. One thirty one point nine. One thirty one point eight. One thirty point five. Wow. One thirty point nine. One thirty two point six. I will have to say, guys, that is impressive performance. Yes, we did calibrate the 2270 this morning before we started our testing, and that's awesome. Now let's see what it sounds like at the shooter's ear.
Now we're going to use the same prime 55 grain ball with the turbo attached, except now we're going to take the pressure reading six inches off my right ear. Go ahead and tell me when the meter's zeroed out and ready to go. You just touch me on the back. One forty five point two. One forty five point two. Okay. One forty five point six. One forty five point six. Okay, zero it out. Okay. One forty four point three. One forty four point three. Zero it out, please. One forty six. One forty six. We got one round left. Zero it out. Okay. One forty six point nine. Okay. One forty six point nine. So we're running at about one hundred and forty four to one hundred forty six decibels right around there. We'll do the math when I get back and edit the video. But because of the gas coming back down the barrel. And on a gas gun, like an AR-15, you're getting gas following the spent casing coming out, and you're getting what I'm going to call chamber pop. And that's something that you can't really deal with with a suppressor. Um, that's just a fact of life with a baffle-type suppressor. We've mounted the turbo to my Midwest Industries. It's a Model 15F, and this is a lightweight AR-15. This one happens to be equipped with the Gemtech bolt carrier. This carrier allows you to control the gas that comes through the carrier to operate the rifle. Basically, you can reduce the gas which is coming back down the tube, the gas tube of the rifle. Some guns require that. Most AR-15s I've shot don't really require a Gemtech bolt carrier that reduces the, the flow of gas. But in the case of AR-10s, a lot of times I shoot an AR-10 without a Gemtech carrier and I will see malfunctions. I think you guys have seen that before on the channel. But so we have the Gemtech carrier in this Midwest Industries AR-15 and we are shooting some Freedom munitions. This is the 55 grain M193, brand new stuff. This is not the remanufactured stuff. And on the rifle, I have the new Trijicon MRO Patrol. That's a hard one to say. Say that 10 times really fast, MRO Patrol. So let's go ahead and see the chamber around. Did not. And let's see how well the gun runs with the Gemtech carrier set to the suppressed setting, which is reducing the flow of gas. Locked open just fine. So the Gym Tech carrier certainly works just fine on the rifle, but we also had this can on the YHM Model 57, which was the host for our testing in this video, and it does not have a gas control carrier in it, and it cycled just fine. Being a lefty and shooting suppressed, uh, doesn't matter what you do to mitigate gas. Every can's got blowback, so it's always gonna be like that for a lefty. Sorry guys, which is how it is. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out this afternoon and doing some shooting with the new Turbo from YHM. This can will be available from Silencer Shop with an MSRP of $489. I'm sure it's gonna have a lower price than that. That's full MSRP, but it does include the Turbo along with the muzzle device to mount it to your rifle. The numbers that this can put down this afternoon were quite impressive. I was actually quite surprised at how well it metered at 1.6 meters off the ground and one meter left. Um, at the ear is over 140 decibels, but that's to be expected with a conventional baffle styled uh, suppressor. So actually the numbers were really solid and it really impressed me. The can is not as heavy as previous YHM products. So it's not the lightest can in the market space, but it's certainly very competitive and the numbers it's putting down guys really surprised us this afternoon. If you guys have any questions about anything that you've seen this video, you can of course ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, you can do that by swinging by and checking out Copper Custom. 
And also, please check out Fall30.com. That's Fall30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Fall30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.